G'day fans, and we're back talking about the Mandalorian. Oh my goodness, stuff's happening. It's very, very, very cool. Oh, where does one begin? So it's Dags and MPS with you talking about the episode, The Jedi, even though there were no Jedi. Why didn't they just call the episode Grogu? People would have said, that is awesome. What does it mean? And of course, we discover that later on. MPS, what did you think about The Jedi? Well, technically, we had a Jedi, ex-Jedi, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and a lot of revelations, and I think we'll uh, just have to wait and get into it as we go through the episode. So fans were absolutely gushing over the appearance, the live-action appearance, the first time of Ahsoka Tano. Oh, she's just turned up for real. Absolutely awesome. It's a different actress. It's a different voice, but, hey, you know, you just got to go with what you got with. And uh, and she had her white lightsabers, and, of course, people might be thinking, why has she got white lightsabers? Because in the book, it was discovered she had red lightsabers, and she decorrupted the crystals, and they're white. That's the reason why. But she is not a Jedi, and that's the funny thing about it. So they keep referring to that to her as that. But, of course, she left the Jedi Order in the Clone Wars and never returned. But maybe for casual viewers, it's just too hard to explain that. And, of course, she never said, oh, I'm not a Jedi. So they've just left it as is. And you just uh, work with what you've got. But uh, purists out there will be going, yeah, that's not entirely correct. But uh, let's move on. Anyway, we head off to Corvus. Good old Corvus is not the most happiest planet in the entire universe. And, of course, we've got the like the village. And the villages are being tormented by the mean uh, magistrate and all the rest of it. And it's like, what did you think of all that, MPS? How did that all work for you? Oh, I thought it was... Uh, what did I write here? Crouching Jedi, hidden Sith. <laughs> it sort of found, found, felt like because, you know, you've got Ahsoka who's acting like a specter. You know, she's sort of running behind things and doing all that. So that was very, very good. Um, I'm not sure if I agree with the actual actress playing it, Rosie yeah. Dawson, because I think that they could have still used uh, Ashley. Yeah, I can't think of it. Yeah, Next I time. think they could have actually used her as Ahsoka because she has the look and she's obviously got the voice. Yeah. Um, but it also felt like Ahsoka was much, much older. You know, well, she was a, a yeah, yeah. I know she's meant to be, but it <clears throat> felt like that. So there was a bit of wisdom behind her. There was a bit of um she wasn't like she was as she was in the Clone Wars, you know, she wasn't just rushing off doing crazy things. She actually thought about it this yeah. time. So the progression of the actual character seemed to be pretty good. Yeah, because the hardest part they've got in this show, and they've done this already with Bo-Katan last week, is they're introducing a character from an animated series, which is great for the fans who go, oh, it's the greatest thing in the universe. But of course, casual viewers who have never watched the animated series, or even fans who have never watched any of the animated series, are seeing Ahsoka for the very first time. And how they see her now, they go, okay, this is how the character is meant to be. So she can't, I guess, they can't carry over all the traits that she had from those uh, series because people just wouldn't be able to relate as to what's going on. I'm sure fans or casual viewers would already be questioning why she got white lightsabers. You know, it's like their brain just like, here's a blue, green, that's it. It was like, we got white all of a sudden. Uh, so I guess they had to find a bit of a balance. I actually toyed with the idea that maybe they could have replaced her voice with Ashley Eckstein because you know, it was a very, very distinct voice and it worked really well. And I know it was a little bit jarring to sort of have a completely different sound to start with, but you sort of deal with it, I guess, and you sort of move on. Um, but uh, it's funny, you're talking about the crouching Jedi hidden Sith thing earlier. When uh, Ahsoka's facing off with the magistrate in that like that temple with the bridge and the water, I think yeah. that's straight out of like Street Fighter or some of those PlayStation games. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was of, like you think that Chinese... when she's got the blade to the magistrate's neck, you just oh you hear was finish her. <laughs> <laughs> it's out of every bad Chinese chop suey film, you know. So you sort of it felt very. Um, uh, it almost felt like it was. The Seven Samurai yep. episode of The Seven Samurai yep. because you Absolutely. had, you know, two two or three different sort of, you know, westerns where you sort of, you know, Ahsoka's down one end and the Magistrate and all those people down the other end. And then you had the Mandalorian and the other dude. And then you had her and her and ah, oh, just, you and, know, and, it was like Western And chucked City. in there, I mean, I, I thought, okay, I don't want to use the term racial stereotyping, but you got the, like, the Asian vendor. Right. And it's like, okay. And this dude sort of just runs off. Okay, fine. But then you see him opening the door and he's closing the door and he's opening the door and he's like, <laughs> like, what are you doing, dude? And we find out later on, he's the guy who's in charge of the place. Fair enough. That's all cool. But it was just like, why were you just like, he's in, he's out, he's in, he's out. It's like, what's the deal with that? I, like, I know. But, uh, I did find I, it kind did, of funny. Uh, yeah. I know. did like the, the discussion that he and the Mando had that was all nonverbal, yep. you know? So he basically said, you know, don't talk to us. And he sort of agreed. And then later on, they sort of nodded to each other and did this. So, you know yeah well speaking of speaking one of the things that the show has as it's a cinematic issue but you have to have it is that din has to explain everything that he's doing 
who's like, oh, we've arrived at this planet. I don't know where we are. Oh, we better just walk into the town. And he's not talking to the kid. The kid won't, wouldn't care less as to what's going on, you know, and he has to explain his actions. Now, typically you wouldn't do that. You know, the idea is you look at a person, you know, it's all actions speak louder than words, but he has to explain everything he's doing. And when you sort of sit and listen to it, you go, who are you talking to, dude? It's like, oh, it's like, oh, I wonder if there's a Jedi here today. <laughs> I wonder if I'll go over there. I'll have to go into town and I don't know where this place is. It's like, it's, I thought it was, it, but it is necessary for the audience because if you just walked off his ship, looked around and just walked away, you'd be going, okay, well, where's he going? What's he doing? So it is a bit of a necessary evil, even if uh, it doesn't make a great deal of sense, but, you know. We yeah. yeah, he's probably using the kid to just to, to say everything. But again, another let's fly a ship over a city and park a million miles away <laughs> and then walk to it later on. It's like, oh, come on, guys, have we not learned anything? It's uh, just getting a little bit out of control. Yeah. But I've got to say, going back to that very first scene where you see white and red, just nothingness yep. around it. And you see the laser bolts and the that was just awesome. You know, you want to see, I think we've seen that in comic books a lot, but we've never seen it on film necessarily. And it was just awesome. Yeah. The, the fight scenes in that, uh, like you got the, the, the bad dudes and they're all wearing helmets, except the magistrate and her Lieutenant played by Michael Bean of all people. So there you go. I, um, uh, so was he Hudson or Hicks? You'll have to sort of work that out yourself. <laughs> um, and uh, it, it's, it was good. But the problem was, it was like, um, hang on, if you know Ahsoka from the previous series, oh, she could take them all on without even blinking her eyes and yeah. just clean them all up, right? So when the, when, when um, Din says to her, oh, yeah, you can't take them on yourself, he says, well, actually, you kind of can, dude. You haven't seen it. She's fought Darth Vader for crying out loud and lived to tell a tale. So, you know, she could easily go in there and, and, and slice and dice the whole lot of them. But, you know, once again, people won't know that. You can't make it too, too powerful. And uh, I thought, yeah, there's going to be a whole lot of dead dudes before the end of the day, as is always the case with these things. And and, uh, and I think that's the only thing that I, I it didn't work for me. It's like, yeah. And like, like when the Din's facing off against the Lieutenant guy, Michael Bean's character, it's like, we already know how this is going to end because yeah. we'd already seen in the previous episode when Din, Din gets shot with laser bolts, it just, bing, there's you know, like, tink, you know, and it's like, there's no way in the world this dude, if he's got the pump action laser thing, which is kind of groovy. Uh, he was never going to win that, that, that duel and that like wild Western sort of duel thing. <laughs> But you know, he should have. He it should have occurred where he maybe got close, like he shot, but it was off, you know, and didn't step aside or whatever the case is. But just to to not have him, yeah, he's the fastest gun in the galaxy, sort of thing. But it's like, yeah, it was just we're getting too predictable again in in this sort of thing. And look, like we said, Ahsoka could have taken them all out. So Ahsoka yep. could have rocked up at night and just killed everyone. Yep. In the at night sort of thing, and no one would have been hurt. She would have got the magistrate, got the answer she wanted, and we wouldn't have even needed the episode. So. Slightly misdirected writing, I think, again, but yeah, I think the rest of it sort of makes up for the episode. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fair enough, too. And I like the fact that um, the magistrate was going to pay Din um, for knocking off Ahsoka with a spear. I thought, how are we going back to the old 20th century? And it's like, we're not, we're now chucking spears everywhere. It's like, <laughs> I thought in the days of laser blasters and all this, <laughs> it was kind of funny. It's just this big metal spear. I thought he could just go out there and start javelin throwing or something like that. I thought, okay, I didn't see that one coming, but you know, it is what, and it sounds good. But, well, you know, whatever. Ahsoka could have done a bit of a, a Guardians of the Galaxy and just used her force powers to pick it up and spear through yeah, all these people. Yeah. And, and that well, would have been... Well, as you've pointed out episode. in our previous discussions before, Ahsoka's playing fighting the magistrate. She could easily have used the force to just say, you know, you're like just I'll just hold your steel or all this sort of thing. Unless it's not class as an unfair fight if you do that. And the fact that Ahsoka lost a lightsaber in the battle, I thought, hang on, uh, you fought Darth Vader for crying out loud, you know? It's like how can how can this person with the spear of all things uh, defeat you? So, but it cinematically it looked good. Maybe it worked well for the narrative, but we clearly knew it was all going to um, uh, work out okay. Um, so that actually sort of brings us to the kid, right, uh, as a name, Grogu. Now, I first thought, just keeping for a bit of consistency, it would have been Yogu, right? Stick with the Ys. We've got Yoda, Yaddle, Yogu, right? <laughs> Yogo. Why? Because we can. But no, it's a completely different name altogether, Grogu. And I thought, yeah, that's not going to roll off the tongue really. Not. I can't imagine the action figure saying Grogu. <laughs> it's like, it's like, well, that's, like a, that's... coughing up a furball or something. Yeah, it doesn't look aesthetically pleasing when you when you write it down it, mate it well. doesn't look good it doesn't sound good you know star wars is renowned for having really stupid names you know here <laughs> you got snoke and now you got grogu 
you know, and no one, if you ever say, oh, there's a dude called Grogu, no one's ever going to think of the kid. They're going to think of some big monster running around on Endor or something like that. Anyway, so uh, anyway, it's Grogu. Make of that what you will. I would have picked Yogu, you know, keep the wise, but yeah, it is what it is. So, uh, and at least I must say the strength, the strongest part of the entire episode was when they're in the forest and they're trying to do the thing with the stone. And even I thought straight away, the kid, Grogu, isn't going to go for the stone. He don't want the rock. He wants the knob, right? He's a knob, he's a knob kind of dude, if you will. And, uh, and that worked. And I thought the whole sequence, even though not a lot really happened, was really, really well done. It's one of the better moments of the, uh, of this, of the thing, the episode, I thought. Yeah. Her, her having the chat with, with the kid and him standing back pacing was like, yeah. he's like, well, how long is this going to take? You know, I yeah. just want to get on with, with the sort of the thing i got to do. Yeah. The kid, I, and this brought me to another point. So the kid talks in squeaks and like little grunts and growls sort yeah. of thing. So it sort of may, maybe thought that maybe that's their native language, you know? So Yoda might have spoke like that. So when he speaks the way he does and says, um, do or do not, there is no try, means that like other foreign languages where words get twisted around, maybe English is like his second language. So that's where the, the yeah. way the speech occurs. So, yep. yeah, I thought that was interesting, but they spoke with the mind. So, you know. I did like the fact that Ahsoka said, quote, you know, the force is an energy field surrounding all living things. And I thought, oh, that's straight out of a new hope. Yeah, good on you. We'll just pinch that one off Ben Kenobi. And I thought, uh, no, it's not actually. It's actually like based on a biological life form called midichlorians, which was referenced in the previous episode, the M count. And it's like, ah, oh, there you go. So I think for purists, they said, oh, we'll, we'll use this line because they're going to love it. But unfortunately, it is actually a midichlorian thing, not necessarily a, just an energy field thing. So <laughs> it's got to split hairs on these things sometimes. Uh, golly, golly, golly. <clears throat> now, I, did you find, I, I nearly laugh when this happened, right? So Grogu gets the knob, right? And he uses the force, grabs the knob, and Din runs over him. And he says, oh, uh, I like, like, you know, actually, sorry, he has the, the knob in his hand. He says, oh, yeah, yeah, do you want this? You want this? And I thought, dude, he's not a dog. You know, it's not like, you know, expecting like a uh, Grogu's tongue to come out. <laughs> yeah, you want it? You want it? You want to come and get it? You want to come and get it? That's how I interpreted it. And when he, once the stone was pulled across, the knob was pulled across, I thought he was going to run over there and pat him on the head. Yeah, good boy. Give him rub on the tummy and stuff like that. I was like, well, Dude, he's like what is this? <laughs> like he did with the well, message in the first episode. You know, it's like, oh. Yeah, well, that's how he's treated him the whole way through. Like at the beginning of the episode, he goes, get back in your seat. No, yeah. get in your seat. Get in your Actually, seat. Oh, did you, you notice, my dog the same thing. instead yeah. of putting him in his seat, the kid's now got to find his own way back. So he says, get in your seat. And it's like in previous episodes, he's put him there. So suddenly the kid's now having to walk places. You know, he walks down the ramp and he gets halfway down. He's like knackered out. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like dude, what's the hell? Where's this changed? So uh, you well, are right. Absolutely. So the kid is now being forced to do his, find his own feet and do his own thing. So, uh, Well, maybe the fact that he gets exhausted so much is because of all the the bad energy that he's sort of gotten because Ahsoka said, oh, look, we got to a certain point. He got out of the temple. Someone stole him from the temple and hid him. But then he saw all this bad stuff and he doesn't remember a lot of things. He's like, well, hang on a second. That's, that's yeah. sort of, that's a really interesting concept. I don't know where they're going to go with that. And the fact that he could actually turn bad, he could become Sith like for the fact that we know that a Jedi and a Sith are, are created by their environment and whoever is training them this could be the same sort of thing. He might just in, end up being like a soaker and a force user rather than Sith or Jedi. Yeah, it was a very interesting point. Um, she said that he has a lot of fear in him. Uh, I thought that was actually, and she made the reference, the subtle reference back to Anakin, not actually mentioning by name. I thought that was quite good. Uh, so we definitely know that the kid was floating around in the Jedi temple uh, when the movies were on Attack of the Clones, Revenge of the Sith. And you clearly saw some of the Order 66 stuff that occurred. Uh, and then people are trying to ascertain as to how um, Grogu, um, it's going to take ages to get used to that name, uh, ended up getting out of the temple, who smuggled him out and, and all the rest of it. So all the other younglings, they all got knocked off by Anakin, but somehow or other Grogu got, uh, you know, escape plan J and he was out the door. And that was actually quite interesting. So, yeah, he's actually had a bit of a dark past there. And I also like the idea that they, she mentioned that he had different masters. So maybe he was a bit of a, a tough kid to deal with in the first place. And I mean, as we've seen in, in, in the show so far, he eats like eggs when he shouldn't be eating mm -hmm. eggs and all the rest of it. So maybe he was a bit of a, uh, a delinquent, has a, the delinquent kid, as it were, you know, the, <laughs> just like causing all these problems and they've just gone through all these different masters. So, but it also shows that his force power, even though it's really, really limited, has actually been trained into him rather than him just doing it naturally. So he's had masters previously. So yeah, there's a fair bit of depth there, which I thought was quite good. So he's been missing for, 
what, 30 years. So yep. he would have been 20, uh, roughly mm. 20 years, sort of like Yoda years yep. uh, when he went. So for 30, 30 years, he's sort of been hidden and things have been maybe yep. done to him and all that sort of stuff and to hide and to repress your, your powers because you had well, to. It sort of, it sort of has a bit of a... a World War II sort of feel of, of certain races having to hide from other races and all that I mean, sort of thing. There's a, certainly a school of argument to say that throughout the Empire era, era, he was having a bit of a hard day at the office. Maybe there are Inquisitors, and this links back to Rebels, who then never watch Rebels. Uh, the Inquisitors were hunting him down as well. So he's obviously had a bit of a tough trot. Uh, and even though he's got the cute looking face now, maybe for a period of time it was, and you're right, he was younger. So, yeah, he's had a bit of a traumatic experience, and maybe what he's going through now is a bit of old PTSD um you know and uh yeah there's a fair bit there but as to whether we'll ever find that out and whether they'll delve into it is another thing but um yeah it was uh quite uh quite interesting and uh yeah it was sort of good to sort of learn a bit more about the kid rather than just having him drag him around i thought it was kind of funny though you think beauty he's like din's found ahsoka here's the kid i'm off and it's like ahsoka says nah can't train him and it was like oh and you know what I, and the first thing i thought it was like the writers of the show i thought no we can't lose the kid now Mate, he's an absolute money spin. He's like, where the ratings are coming from as the kid. No, let him just stay with Din, you know. <laughs> it's, it's all good. Now, Din's got to go somewhere else off to Tython. It's like a video game quest, you know. He just keeps jumping around from place to place to place. Maybe in the hope that he can find a temple and handball the kid off there. He's just going to be in love with this thing forever. <laughs> you just know that. No one wants the kid. Can't even give him away. That's how bad it is. <laughs> so that was that was the weird part about, about Ahsoka. She could have just gone with him to the temple, sorted it out. Yeah, that's a good and point. Said, well, here's the temple. Here we are, you know, because she's accomplished her mission. Yep, she's saved the day. The, yep. the 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 villagers are all good, ready to go. She's got nothing on the calendar right now, so she could have gone with him, yep. spent a couple of days off world. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's that issue of just single characters appearing in single episodes. And you're absolutely correct. You would have thought, oh, after all the time and effort, it would have been like, okay, uh, yeah, I'll jump on board with the Razor Crest with uh, Din and uh, and the kid, because you would have thought that she has a vested interest in ensuring that something is going to happen and yeah, the kid's going to be okay. And maybe she herself wants to go to Typhon to check out the Jedi Temple and suss it all that, rather than just saying, yeah, yeah, off you go. That's a very good point, actually. And uh, yeah, I think that one might have actually slipped through the cracks from, from the fans' point of view. The big reveal of the show, oh, Ahsoka's in the show. How awesome is that? But that wasn't the biggest of the bigger reveals. And we've got Grogu, we've got the name of the kid. Awesome. Suddenly we've got a reference to Thrawn now lives and is referenced. And, of course, the fans who just went off and, oh, my God, that's awesome, that's grouse. And all the casual viewers who never read the books, never watched the animated series are going, who? <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, you're thinking, all right, now, the, I had to think about this afterwards. Uh, and I thought, so where would he have been during the Battle of Endor? Because you would have thought all the best troops are going to be there. So he's clearly not at the Battle of Endor. He survived and he's nicked off. Who knows? Uh, it's, it's just convoluted. But maybe this is a way of leading into having, because in the novels, the original heir to the Empire novels, Thrawn took over the Imperial Remnant and became the main antagonist for the, for the, for the books, right? And because we know that there's still Imperial remnants floating around in this Mandalorian universe uh, in the show, maybe he is off somewhere else controlling a part of the Imperial remnant. But of course, if that is the case, then that actually lowers Moff Gideon's importance because uh, Thrawn was a Grand Admiral. He's got this huge backstory that goes with him through Rebels and the books and whatever else, whereas Moff Gideon has just been introduced into the show. And you can almost argue, it's like, well, okay, now we've got potentially two antagonists and all the fans are going to go, oh, I don't want to about, know about Moff Gideon anymore and his plans with all these experiments. I want to know what's going on with Thrawn. So they just deviated from one antagonist to the next. And, uh, and of course, once again, the audience, the casual audience are going to go, well, I know who Moff Gideon is because I've seen him already and he looks like a bad dude and he's got the dark saber, but I don't know who this other guy is. So it's actually has the potential of really convoluting the entire pool of baddies as it were. And... Uh, uh, I don't know. It's just got a lot more questions and answers. And um, anyway, it Look, makes there's, my brain hurt. <laughs> there's, there's a possibility that uh, Moff Gideon gets. We've got three episodes left. So, you know, <clears throat> Saturday, Sunday, Monday in the life of the Mandalorian, I guess. Because um, it just seems to be every day of the week he's got another thing. Look, by the, by the end of the, th the series, there's two possibilities I think that could happen. One, we, we knock off Moff Gideon. Simple as that. And then Thrawn's next season's bad guy. Or Moff Gideon comes up and is Thrawn's number two sort of thing. And, you know, he's doing all the dirty work, whereas 
Braun is making it look like he's doing all the good work. So I, yeah, it's just too much. So. Um, yeah, just a couple of quick points just to finish off. I like the fact that he says when uh, he's walking out of the campsite and the guy goes, oh, you know, the bad guy goes, oh, what's that? And he goes, oh, I keep it around for good luck. You know, he talks about the child that way. And it's like, yeah. well, he has been pretty good luck because otherwise, well, if, actually, if it wasn't for the kid, he wouldn't have gotten into some of this trouble anyway. So yeah. who knows? Yeah. Uh, and secondly, I noticed when Ahsoka was fighting, especially at the top, when she jumps over the temple wall the first time, there's a lot of sort of anger in her face. It wasn't like, you know, she wasn't being almost Jedi. She wasn't quite Sith. And so therefore, you know, most of the Jedi don't fight in anger as such, but she sort of had the angry face on for that battle and she could have just wiped them all out really easily. Yeah. That's why I, I did think it was funny when she says, I'll come back in one day. It's like, well, you're already here. Why don't you just do it now? But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a bit of force, pick those those guys up, off, and just let them fall, and yep. then just clean them up afterwards, yep. and then just walk straight through the doors. It's yep. just... Yeah, yep. a bit silly. But anyway, so give us some helmets. Uh, MPS, what did you think of The Jedi? Oh, look, I know I've been harsh the last couple of episodes, but, you know, they've also been quite uh, average. I'm going to give this one... Oh, it's not quite there, but it's four helmets from me this week. Jeez, aren't you? How's that? We've been kicked upstairs. A bit of good quality Jedi action for MPS. Well done. Um, a lot of fans <clears throat> have been gushing over this entire episode. They've gone completely nuts. Oh, my God, it's got a soaker. It's mentioned Thrawn. We've got the kid's name. It's all very exciting, yada, 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 yada. I have, I have to say I am the opposite to you. I did not enjoy this much at all. Uh, I did not like the predictability of attacking the, the, the city. It was like colour by numbers, right? A whole lot of bad dudes going to get killed. We know that. Our heroes won't even have a drop of sweat. I know that too. <laughs> um, the face-off with the magistrate, yeah, that was always only in one way. The face-off with the lieutenant, yeah, that was only going to end one way. And the whole city stuff bored the bejesus out. And it did. I was actually bored. I was sitting there going, this is just, get on with it. I've seen this last week and the week before and the week before and the week before. Last season, is it's just predictability to the max. And I really, it really annoyed me, actually. Seeing Ahsoka was great and all that part was good. The whole thing, as I said, with the three uh, characters and the, uh, like understanding who the kid was, excellent. That part was really, really good. It's the only reason why I've actually rated this up a little higher than I would have normally. But for myself personally, uh, and even though fans are loving it, it just not, did not work for me at all. And uh, it was a bit of a drag and they've really got to change their writing style to make this a bit more interesting. So I went, it was lucky it wasn't two and a half, but I've gone for three helmets and that's barely pushing three helmets. Uh, I was thinking two and a half. That was my first score because I thought, nah, this is just, I've seen it all before, nothing new. So uh, uh, anyway, so that's how I sort of saw it and hopefully things will pick up and it'll be a bit more interesting. But uh, I think fans, a lot of fans are really enjoying the superficial nature of what they're getting. And once they, it's only when you delve into it, you go, you really, you know, it really isn't that good after all. There's really a lot of weak elements uh, and they're not focusing on the strong points. And I agree with you. Ahsoka should have gone with Din, but no, nah, it should be, won't. She's another character that'll be gone next week. Um, and uh, yeah, they're just sort of coming and going. So anyway, I, I'm, I'm just waiting to see when someone does, when the series has come out, someone does the final edit and, and <clears throat> cuts it all up and makes it like a two hour show and has all the good bits. You know, we don't have to go to the frog place and deal yeah. with that stuff and, and, and all that sort of stuff. It actually makes the show a two hour movie and it actually is concise and makes sense. That would be awesome to see. So someone out there will do it, no doubt, give it a yeah. couple of weeks. All of it is a whole lot of shots of just Din just walking around and the kid going looking cute. <laughs> and that's there's, there's your movie roll credits. So there you go. Anyway, speaking of rolling credits, we're about to buzz off. Uh, we've got another episode next week. The old Mandalorian is very exciting. Oh, and now we've got Grogu action. Oh, I'm never going to get used to that name. I tell you what, I just feel like a hot bowl of Grogu. They know you. Yeah, Pictures conjures up all these horrible pictures. Anyway, so uh, like Grogu, we're about to buzz off. So uh, in the interim, uh, make sure you keep on warzing on. What else can we say? And we'll see you all in a few days' time. So catch you then. Okay, bye for now. See ya.